What is up, Evil Dead fans? It's been a little while. I was on vacation. I do apologize. I'm wearing a different hat. It makes me look like I'm a little kid. It's not my favorite hat, but it does the job. Um, this video, I'm going to talk about doing lightweight chainsaw bars. Now, this is nothing new. Um, people have done them in the past. Some people, they'll make like con safe ones out of wood. It's just a single piece of wood. Um, some people layer things up like that. Uh, wood. Um, I've heard people make them out of PVC um, material. Some people just do full castings. But this method that I'm going to show you, it's going to make it rigid. It's going to make it just like a normal chainsaw bar. It's going to reduce the weight at least in half. And you can make this con safe as well. Um, but it's going to look like a real chainsaw bar. Now the chainsaw bar we're working on is an Evil Dead 2 work shed one. This one did not have the little sprocket um, uh, rivets in the top. If, on the, if you remember from the work shed scene when he's building it, it only has a single hole through it, which if I remember right, somebody informed me that it is a craftsman bar, an old craftsman bar, because somebody actually found one. Um, and they said they think it was an 18 inch chainsaw bar. I don't know for sure. I know everything else when it came to the race tops it was all 20. Uh, they could have had an 18. I don't know. I'm going to have to do a little more research on that to just to be sure. Um, so, so the one I'm making is for my friend Oscar out in Sweden, the land of meatballs and goulash. I'm probably wrong about that, but <laughs> I don't know. Um, so before we get started, I just want to tell a good friend of mine. He's had a bad day today. His name is Philip. And he's been posting on Facebook of him raging out. So I just wanted to let him know that when somebody hands you a shit sandwich, what you do is you take that shit sandwich and you stick it in their pillowcase. That's what you do. Now, I'm not going to tell you to do that, per se. I wouldn't do that. That's breaking and entering, and it's gross. Um, but funny story, I have this friend, and back in the day, in our early 20s, if you would mess with any one of his friends, um, he, he would go and piss on people's stuff. No joke. So the story, one of the stories is a mutual friend of ours, his roommate had an affair with his girlfriend. So before he moved out, him and my friend who pisses on everything, and he wouldn't fight people because he, he, he was a gold glove boxer and he was super strong. And he just didn't want to get in that situation. He, he went to the apartment or the house where they were living at, and he pissed on the guy's pillow, his comforter, couch, love seat, and I think his dishes. But he would pee on, <laughs> I don't know why he did this, but he would pee on things that was regularly used. Oh, and his toothbrush. And I don't know how much liquids this guy drank, but he would piss everywhere. He just wouldn't piss on the floor. And I don't, he would just do it. He would just, he'd just piss on everything. I don't know why he told you this, but he would. He's still a good friend of mine too, and I don't think he does that anymore because we're older than that now. All right, so going back to the chainsaw bar, um, just to let you know everything, your supplies that you need, you can get like at a Home Depot style store or Lowe's. I would just stay away from the dinkier hardware stores because the main piece you're gonna need, they probably don't have. Um, the tools you're gonna use, you're gonna use sandpaper, different grits, of course. You're gonna use, um, a Dremel tool with a cutting wheel. Um, you're going to use any kind of epoxy, a really strong epoxy, two-part epoxy. Um, you can use Gorilla Glue, things like anything super strong. And clamps, you'll need some clamps and a drill with some drill bits. So, and this is specifically the Workshed Chainsaw from Evil Dead 2. Um, so what you need to buy, other than the glue and sandpaper stuff, um, you need to get a metal bar Preferably about 22 inches. Uh, try to get at least 22 inches because you don't know exactly your length. You're going to have to cut it down. Um, so a bar similar to this, similar thickness. You can use aluminum. Don't get too heavy of a bar. Um, you can actually, I do suggest get the one that's a little bit wider. Now what this is going to do, it's going to be sandwiched in between your two pieces of your chainsaw bar. Now this chainsaw bar, you can make them con safe. Um, it is going to be very sturdy. It will not shatter. It will break if you hit it with a hammer because that's just plain stupid, but it is gonna be very, very, very durable and it won't be flippity floppity, which I've seen people do. It's just flippity floppity bullshit. And I hate that. It needs to be nice and stiff, if you know what I mean. Um, 
So you need that, and then one other thing you're gonna need, and you can get this at any big hardware store, is if you look at this side right here, and you see this other flat side. Now this panel, and don't mind my hands, they got paint on them. It seems like paint likes to get stick on me versus whatever I'm painting. Um, this is actually a shower panel that you can buy a sheet of at Home Depot for like 35 bucks. And your sheet's like 10 by seven foot. It's a massive piece. But if you plan on doing multiple chainsaws or selling chainsaws, you're gonna need this piece and you can actually produce a lot of chainsaw bars. Um, so I'm gonna show you the big piece of what you need to do. Okay, so here's the piece. Look at how big it is, it's very big. Um, I, I always lay them flat because when it comes to like fiberboard and stuff, stuff like that, depending on the temperature of where you live and the humidity, they can warp. So you wanna make sure, if you even have to cut up in smaller pieces to keep them flat, I do suggest to keep them flat. I hardly have any humidity where I live, so I just lay it flat on the floor. Don't care, but I always put this weird bumpy side down because um, you don't want to mess up the other side because that's really what you're going to use on the outside of the chainsaw bar. Now I got a chainsaw bar sitting here and what you can do is you want to cut out two pieces all the way across from there across and another one is very similar as possible. Basically cut out one then put it over here, trace it out. So you have two identical pieces or something very similar. Um, then tape the edges together, the two pieces you cut out. Tape them together with clear, thick tape, like packaging tape. You don't want to use a tape that stretches. Then what you do, if you lay your chainsaw bar down, you will trace it to whatever chainsaw bar you have. And if you don't have a chainsaw bar, uh, go online and find a diagram or a printout of a certain chainsaw bar you want. And you can have a template of that. So after that's done, and you got your two pieces taped together, and you have your chainsaw bar um, traced on there, then you get your Dremel tool, your Dremel cutter, and say this is just, this is gone, but it's the outline. You start cutting your edge of that black line. Use a black marker when you do this, when you trace it. It's a lot easier. You cut along where you want it to be cut. When you get to a certain distance, Replace the tape, keep cutting, replace the tape so it doesn't move. You want two identical pieces. So it's easier to cut them together versus apart so they're identical. You do that all the way around. You cut out whatever piece here you need. And then remember when you're cutting it out, keep them taped together. Okay, so once you got those two pieces together and it's already cut and everything, you get your sandpaper, you remove one side of your tape sand it flat or sand it to the proper uh, contours. And then once that side's done, you replace the tape, take the other tape off, sand it down that side, round everything off. So now you got two identical pieces, right? Okay, so with that being said, guys, like I said, we got two identical pieces, now comes the other part. Okay, so now you have your two identical pieces. Remember, you want the smooth side out. You want this rough side on the inside. You don't want that on the outside because it looks like shit. You want that smooth side. So both, when you got two of them together, we got another piece sitting around here. Yeah. Okay, when you got two of them together, that rough side's gonna be right against each other. Um, you wanna sand down, you wanna scuff up all the inside of here, all this rough stuff. Get it nice and unglossy. Don't go too crazy with it. You just want to be adhesive. So you have those two pieces. Let's say this chainsaw bar is one of those pieces I cut out, right? Next thing you want to do is you get your bar. Remember, it's going to be longer. You want your bar to go about to right here to right here, right at the end. There's a reason you want it all the way at the end. Um, what you do is you figure out where you want it against one of those pieces because remember both pieces are identical now um, that you've already sanded it and made it nice and pretty and nice and identical you trace your cut line here on your metal you cut that out once that's cut out smooth sanded whatever you get your adhesive uh, your two-part epoxy or whatever strong adhesive you have and then you place it evenly 
across there. Remember, this is going to be cut out. So then you'll know exactly where this bar needs to go. You place it exactly where it needs to be. You look and see if you like it. Then you take it off. Make sure you scuff this. Then you put your two-part epoxy down on one side of your bar. And then you place it where it's supposed to be. Um, when it comes to this hole here, you can pre-drill that hole with just those two identical pieces before the bar. I do suggest that. So um, when you drill it later, once it's all together, it, it, the uh, drill won't dance around on you. So what you do is you place it down all the way from here to there, and then it's epoxied down and you clamp it with your clamps and just let it sit for as long as it needs to cure. Once that is cured, simple again. You get your two-part epoxy, you do the other side or whatever epoxy, do the other side that's up, and then you get your other piece. Say this is a big piece, and remember you gotta scuff that side down too, then you lay it down, make sure everything is even across the sides lengthwise because you don't want it to be off. And then you clamp it down, and then you wait for that to cure. Now when that's done, like I said, you're gonna have that hole, you still see the metal here. Now, now's a good time to drill that metal through once it's all cured because if it's just, um, you, drill, you try to pre-drill the metal, it can sometimes dance and then it looks all funky. You want it to be even all the way on the inside. You don't want a bigger hole showing here. And remember, Evil Dead 2, the workshop one didn't have these sprockets or anything, so we're not worried about that right now. Um, let me go get the one that I just did. It's not done painting. I got some little things I gotta do to it, but let me show you guys. Just give me a minute. Okay. Mm. Okay, so here we go. Lightweight chainsaw bar. And it's got the one hole in there. You can see, if you look close, there's no big gap in between the metal and everything. Everything's nice and even on that, on that side. And if you look right here, you have the nice gap, just like a real chainsaw bar. Now you can see some white down here because I had to, that's where I had to hang it to paint it, but you're never, never gonna see that and I'm just gonna hand paint that. But everything's nice and even, uniform all the way through. And since this is um, not a running chainsaw or anything, I didn't put any kind of a sprocket in there. You can, there's no point into it to do it really. Um, but yeah, it's nice and rigid. It's kind of, paint's kind of fresh, so I don't really wanna smack it on something. But it's nice and flat. It'll go in on the chainsaw where I need it to be. Definitely before you paint it, test it out on your chainsaw, make sure it will fit. But it looks good. It looks like the real thing, and it is half the weight or less than half the weight. It just depends on what chainsaw bar you're doing. Now, one more thing before I let you go. I'm missing stuff. Give me one minute. Okay, so when it comes down to the chain, now you can, if, you, if you've done it right and you know your specifications of the chainsaw bar that you built and you know which chain, 20 inch chain you need to buy, you can just buy it and epoxy it on. Now. I have a lot of extra chains sitting around and I know a lot of other builders out there do. So this is what I'm doing with this one and a lot of other ones. I have a lot of these little dinky ones sitting around. I got just piles of them. So what I'm gonna do since it is gonna be epoxied on is I'm gonna cut it at a certain point. You need more than one of these. Cut it at a certain point, I'm going to epoxy it on the chainsaw and then get another one, cut it at the same point on the other one. I'm gonna have to cut it twice then epoxy that against it at the right spot and have it all the way down and extending out in the back so it catches my flywheel. So that's a good way to get rid of all these extra shit chains that you have that are too small that come on these home lights. So let's kind of test this out, see how well this thing fits through the little slot. I don't want to scratch it because the paint's pretty fresh. Come on, baby. My hand's kind of in the way. Look at that. And this is actually, like I said, a smaller chain for the dinkier bars and stuff, but it, once it's epoxied in, you'll never even know. You can get bigger chains, wider ones, but this is, it looks good. Looks really good, nice and even. You just shove it in a little crack, like a normal chainsaw bar. There you go. And if you want it to be con safe and look real, you can do the same bar method and get a chain or whatever chains you have sitting around 
and just grind off all of these barbs up here. Not down here, up here. Just grind them all off, flatten them out so there, there's no barbs. Now you have a very realistic lightweight chainsaw that you can carry around a con all day long, use it for decoration, things like that. This one specifically is built so the guy can wear it and it's gonna be on a full-sized mannequin bust of Ash from Evil Dead, or Evil Dead 2. So it needs to be lightweight. So that's a good way to cut down the weight. Like I said, if you're walking around a con all day, you don't wanna have the weight. You want it to look real. You want people to go, damn, that's, that's awesome because I've seen pictures of people walking around with them with just a bar or some people have made out of wood. Um, some people have used uh, rosary beads for some odd reason. Uh, some people use bike chains. But this is a way to make it look accurate, folks. Accuracy is what I'm talking about. And uh, it takes a couple days to do it. It's just set time and paint time. It doesn't take long. Now, when it comes to me doing, I'm making three of the lightweight ones for the ones for Chicago. Um, it's going to be a little bit different because they have that removable tip piece. Now, the way I'm going to do that is make a stencil of it. And I'm going to draw it on. The, uh, let's use this one, I won't handle the other one. Draw it on the other one, and then I'm going to use my wood burner to burn in the grooves. Same thing with the circle, except I'm gonna to get this circular piece and heat it up and just push it into it on different spots. And I have a different plan for the sprockets that I need to do too, or the different uh, little deals right here. So that's a good way to do it. And, I, and the chains, they'll have real chains, but they will not have the barbs on there so people can walk around the cons with it And because Bruce Campbell's gonna be there um, and uh, Sam Raimi and Ted Raimi are gonna be there. And of course, you'll wanna get it signed. So, but there it is, guys. It's very simple, um, not hard to do. It just takes a little time. And uh, just make sure when you're doing it, wear a face mask and goggles because that shit, when you cut it, gets everywhere. Don't do it inside your house. Do it somewhere safe outside or something. Um, but yeah, turned out well. Really like it. it. Looks just like a real chainsaw bar, but I think right now it is, oh, with the metal bar in there, it's almost a pound. And remember I said you want that metal to be in that slot. The reason for that is if it's too high, it's gonna flop around because it's gonna be weak down here. You want that side, especially right here, to be strong. And you want it actually strong all the way through, but this side is the most important to stay strong. Um, and you want it long enough so the end doesn't flop around. You want it just nice and perfect. And I've tried to do three of these pieces together, but you still get that big wobbly look. You don't want that. It's got to be nice and rigid. So I hope that helped you guys out. If you have any questions on it, let me know. Um, so, and I might be doing a giveaway soon. I don't know what I'm gonna be giving away, but I'm gonna make it super hard to win this. Not gonna be that simple, guys. So I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do it and what I'm gonna give away. So um, guys, that's all I got for now. I got some things I do need to talk about, um, about Prime One Studios, Trick or Treat Studios, a few other things, but I'll get to that in a future video. And if you're on the Knights of Mary page, sometimes I do live videos. I've been asked to do more, so I'm gonna, going to do that. So guys, until next time, you stay groovy.